and, and just rearrange it. And this lasted for about, oh, about a minute or so. And then she looked in the camera and she goes, do you believe that wherever I'm putting a flower, Chris is correcting me? And uh, when That's it aired funny. a few weeks later, that, that was left in, in, on the air. And I saw her a few weeks after that. I said, Martha, I'm surprised that you let that segment in of me correcting you. She goes, well, I want people to know I'm not really that perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now I've created a base of the bouquet. Um, I started off with, um, what's it called again? Uh, Exora. It's Exora and it comes from Peru. A lot of flowers are starting to come from Peru now. Also, you see it sometimes in, uh, in Florida. In Miami, I've seen bushes of this. But just by using this, the stems were a little thin, so it didn't give me any body. So I picked some pieces of dogwood, which are a little heavier, and they create more of a base. I've added the Exora, so now I have my base ready. All the stems, as you might maybe can see, they all face the same way. I add all the flowers from the same direction, so I'm not wasting any space in my hands. If you don't do this, you end up with, you need bigger hands to, to, to make a nice bouquet. Did you see what I just did? I mean, if anybody's looking at me, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took the tulip, that's uh, these uh, French tulips they're called. Uh, they're, they're all over the city now uh, growing about this, but you can open it like this by just pulling the stems. Uh, let me show you one more. But it does wonderful things to an arrangement. And you just put your thumb in the back and just peel it back. So you take the tulip and you sort of make it into a camellia. And it, it really it looks great. Right. It's something that really, it, it, it's, it's a fun thing to do. You're not really damaging the flower because the flower has really uh, grown. A tulip uh, and, and has a, after you cut it and put it in an arrangement, it grows about another inch, inch and a half uh, when it's fully grown. So if you use the tulips that are very tight, the next day they'll start moving around as Gerbers do also. You know what's a good trick? If you, with a pin, if you, just make a small hole right under the head. It prevents uh, the tulip from growing. That when I use tulips for parties, I always make the arrangements the day off. Uh, I've learned the hard way because um, I've made arrangements, put them in my cooler, and the next day they were all leaning to one side and I had to do everything over again. Now all the stems are facing the same way, the same direction. When I add a rose, like here, I see a lot of roses on this side and I need something here. So I twist my bouquet, have my opening in my hand right here, I add a rose, it comes out on the side, I see where I want it, and then I add it to my hand and the stem goes the same way. It's starting to be pretty nice. Chris, what's your birthday? It was recently. Recently, yes. What's the date? 16th. 16th. Are Maybe. you looking for somebody in the audience that has a birthday around Close the same to time? Yours. Yeah. And uh, that is 65 or will admit to being 65? I'll make that bouquet for <laughs> that person. <laughs> if not, we do have a bride in the audience that's getting married next week. Sure. A little bride, bri bridal bouquet, but... Uh, it will last till next week. And she will run away, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this technique, they don't really do in New York. Most florists, they work in, uh, in vases. This is a very old fashioned style. You'll see it in France, in Germany, in Holland. And they wrap it in beautiful cellophane. And the packaging is absolutely breathtaking to be walking down the boulevard with this big cellophane piece and these flowers like that. I think it's more attractive than a milk container. Most people don't bring flowers if they, if they go to somebody's home for dinner or if they visit their mothers. Like even though my, uh, my mom um, was around flowers all the time, I would bring her flowers in the weekend. Same with my grandmothers. And everybody does that in Holland. Of course, the flowers there are a lot less expensive than here. But uh, it's also a cultural difference, I think. 
it's better than bringing a bottle of wine to somebody's house and drink the half, uh, half of it yourself. <laughs> okay, that's pretty. I think both Renko and I have the same problem when we go to someone's house for dinner, there are no flowers in the house because they're afraid to even do a blood yeah, vase. They're, they're afraid to be criticized. <laughs> and honestly, it doesn't take a whole lot to make your house look beautiful with flowers. You can go to the farmer's market. During this time of the year, they'll have a lot of flowers. Also in the fall, beautiful dahlias, zinnias. And for not too much money, probably less money than you would pay or I would pay in the flower market, you can have a beautiful uh, bouquet. My advice is don't try to mix too many flowers like we're doing now. Just buy one thing and use a lot of it, and that will give you a nice show. You think show. this is too busy? No. <laughs> it's, it's not busier than your shirt, Chris. <laughs> you it's know like, you'll it's, pay for that. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like camouflage. <laughs> no, Chris. All right, the ranunculus. And you can imagine, after making 50 of these uh, bouquets, your hand gets very, very tired. And we've been, uh, I've been teaching people to make this bouquet. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's beautiful. I've been teaching this bouquet to people at the uh, Flower School of New York. And after one minute, the people are tired already and say, I can't hold it anymore. Can you finish it? I say, no, you have to learn it the hard way. That's why you're here. There we go. I'll do something simple while you're doing that. Okay. Just going to crisscross some roses here that we have left over. Yeah, that's a great shaped vase, very easy to work with. A round shaped vase is much easier to work with than a square. Because with a square, as soon as you put the stems in, they go to the corners. And it's very hard to get the center filled with flowers. Unfortunately, we're going to have to cut these very, very short, but it's a beautiful rose, uh, the two tones, the three tones to this rose. Yeah, it's called Gypsy Curiosa. It's one of my favorites, especially here in the museum for events with uh, gold tablecloth, gold ballroom chairs. It, it looks very rich. Now, use it a what lot. I'm doing here is just going to crisscross these stems. And another thing you really have to remember when you have a clear vase like this, that no leaves go in the water. Yeah, a drop of bleach is good. Even um, there was this truck driver in Holland. He would come to my father's flower shop every week and buy uh, roses for his wife. Ten roses, same variety, every week the same thing. And he started experimenting himself with different products in the water in order for the flowers to last longer. And he swears by it that when you add half a can of 7-Up uh, to the water, it, uh, it lasts longer. And it's actually true because there's a glucose, which is sugar, in the water or in the 7-Up. In the and um, since the flower has been cut, it doesn't get any glucose or sugar from the root anymore. So when you add it in the water, it, um, it, it uses that and the flower uh, will stay last much longer. The flower to a plant is not very important. The leaves are much more important because the flower is just for pollination and um, the green part, which are the leaves, the plant needs in order to survive. So if you add a little sugar, it, uh, it will take a little while longer before the plant gives up the flower. How about gin? Vodka? Gin? I don't know. Well, that, that I drink myself, Chris. But there are all those theories about a penny in the water, gin, vodka, aspirins. Um, uh, there's about, um, when I was in Palm Beach recently, I had a, a tall container like Remco has on the far stage there. And a woman in the audience asked me, how do you...